Hi, my name is Ivo and I'm doing research into Nikola Tesla's impulse electricity. Can a resonant coil generate real usable electric power? To generate electric power, we need both voltage and current present at the same time and space. In an electric resonance system, the voltage and current are out of phase. When the current is maximum, then the voltage is minimum and vice versa. So how does this work with a resonant coil? Let's take a look. For easy explaining, I will assume resistance is zero in the system. In real life, there is always some resistance which will transform the electric power into heat losses. Let's first take a look at the voltage and the current phase relationship of a resonant coil. Let me explain what we see here. This is a single resonant cycle which repeats itself in time. In red, the resonant voltage sign which represents the dielectric ether field. And in blue, the resonant current sign which represents the magnetic ether field strength. As you can see, the red voltage and the blue current are 90 degrees out of phase. When the voltage is maximum, the current is minimum and vice versa. The magnetic current and the dielectric voltage are constantly transforming into each other. I have divided this single period into four quarters, Q1 to Q4. And Q1 runs from 0 to 90 degrees and Q2 runs from 90 to 180 degrees and so on. When Q4 ends at 360 degrees, Q1 starts again in a new cycle at zero degrees. Now let's take a look at the power of this resonance system. Electric power exists when both the magnetic and the dielectric fields are present in the same time and space. This means there needs to be current and voltage present. Let's first take a look at when there is no power in the resonance cycle of energy transformation. In this picture you see when the voltage or the current is zero there will be no power in the resonance system. As you can see there are four moments in a single period where this occurs. At each transition of one quarter into the next quarter there is a moment of transition of polarity where there is no power. This happens at the 0, 90, 180 and 270 degrees points. These zero power, power points are infinitely small points in time. Now let's take a look at the time periods where there is power in a resonant coil. We have seen that the resonant voltage and current signs uh, of a resonance system never are maximum at the same time. But while the voltage is transforming into current and vice versa, both voltage and current are present at the same time. In the graph we can see this almost all of the time. So a resonant coil almost always has power. To me that was rather a surprising realization. But the question now becomes is it generating power or is it consuming power? For this we need to take a look at the polarity of the voltage and current. Take for example a DC lamp. When this DC lamp burns, voltage and power can be measured. They will be equally in polarity. 1 positive DC amps and 12 positive DC volts will consume 12 watts of electric power. Note that I said consume. The lamp consumes 12 watt of electric power and it generates 12 watt of light and heat. 
This is due to the conventional current. It would be logical if the consumed power would be expressed as negative. It would be correct to say the lamp is negative 100 watts or negative 12 watts. But this is not the case due to the conventional power flow from positive to negative. While in real life current flows from negative to positive. This is an old agreement that is simply silly and false, but we are so used to it, we can't change it. If you are confused now, don't worry, I'll keep using the conventional current. This is just to make you understand what nature really is doing. This means when we generate power, we will need a negative conventional current and a positive voltage or vice versa, as long as the current and the voltage are opposite polarity, we are generating power. An example where this happens is the discharge of a capacitor. And this leads to the concept of negative resistance due to the negative current. Let's go back to the resonant sine wave graph and see where this condition of power consumption happens. As you can see in Q2 and Q4 the current and the voltage are present and they are of equal polarity. Both are positive in Q2 and both are negative in Q4. This means the resonant coil is consuming power in Q2 and Q4. External power is flowing into the resonance system. Now we will take a look at the power generation. In Q1 and Q3, the voltage and the current are opposite polarity. So the current and the voltage are generating power. This means the resonant coil in Q1 and Q3 acts as a generator of electric power. Let's now take a look at the oscilloscope where I have probed the voltage and the current of a resonant coil. And by multiplying the voltage and the current, I can plot the power of the system. I've made a setup, a resonant sine wave is produced. This is the voltage and here is the current in purple. As you can see, they are out of phase and I have a bigger phase shift than 90 degrees because my current probe uh, has a measurement error around this frequency of around 10 degrees. So it's not perfectly 90 degrees, but in reality it is. I just use this to show you the power calculation. As you can see here is the power trace in light blue. The frequency of the power is twice as high as the resonant frequency. And as you can see, we have a negative power cycle where the power is being generated, a positive cycle where the power is consumed, a negative cycle, a positive cycle, and so on. At twice the frequency of the resonant system. So this maximum on the voltage is one cycle. And if you go to the power, we have one, two cycles. So the power frequency is an octave higher than the resonant frequency of the system. Okay, now let's take a look where the power maximums are situated. We have the first quadrant here from zero volts to maximum voltage. And on the middle of the first quadrant is the negative power maximum where power is generated. So that is on one eighth of the cycle. Then we have a power consumption maximum here again in the middle of the second quadrant. So that is three eighths. And then here starts the third quarter and in the middle of the third quarter is the negative power maximum again where power is being generated. This is the 5 eighths part, 5 eighths 
I don't know how you call that in correct English. Remember, I'm Dutch, so my English isn't perfect, as you already have heard. And then in the last uh, quarter, in the middle of the last quarter, is another positive power maximum where power is being consumed from outside of the system on the 7 8th part. So, when we add up the power consumption and the power generation, we will come to the conclusion that the total power is zero as the resonance cycle generates and consumes in equal amounts which add up to zero total electric power. So we have seen a resonance cycle of electrical field energy transformation. It generates and consumes power in equal amounts in its four quarters, making the total sum of the power that is produced or consumed zero. Does this mean a resonant coil never generates any real usable power? No. We can unbalance the resonance system by introducing impulses to Q1 and Q3 of the resonance system. But that is another subject for another video. I recommend you check out my April 2019 published radiant power video and subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell for my future videos on this subject. I just wanted to share this concept of power consumption and generation as it is really important to me because it makes clear the impulses should be placed in Q1 and Q3 of the resonance cycle to amplify the power generation of a resonant coil. This information is part of my open source research. If you want to fund my research, you can leave a donation in my PayPal account, which is also found in the video description below. Thank you for watching and see you next time.